Have you ever wondered how breaks affect your skill improvement? Many people find massive spikes in improvement after not practicing for a while, but others seem to get worse if they take a long break. This graph should help explain why. It completely explains what rust actually is and how to use it to your advantage. This graph has probably taken the most amount of my time out of any other video I've made. I came up with a rough version of this graph about a year ago, but didn't fully flesh it out until recently. Now this graph fully explains basically every scenario of practicing and not practicing for skill improvement. Let's break down this graph from square one. First let's start with the power law of practice part of the graph. On this graph, the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents skill level. When we first start practicing something, we normally see a gradual rise into fast improvement. When we reach our peak improvement rate, which varies for different people, we start to see a gradual decrease in skill for the time practiced. Even though we keep practicing, we improve at a smaller and smaller rate. This is known as the power law of practice. That's great and all, but what if we stop practicing? If we stop practicing, then the power law of practice would flip on itself. Remember, this line represents our current skill level, so if we practiced for only this amount of time, then suddenly stopped, we would see a similar decrease in skill, almost as if we flipped a mirror. Although our true skill would never reach zero, just constantly approaching it. However, this scenario is somewhat unlikely unless you only practice less than 20 hours. Why 20 hours? As John Kaufman found, if you spend at least 20 dedicated hours towards practicing something, you will have the most bang for your buck, which statistically should be at about this point on the graph, which is when progress starts to decrease instead of increase. A more likely scenario is if we practice for this amount of time, which might be more like months. If we stopped practicing here, the same thing would happen where the graph would basically flip on itself, similar to that of a mirror. Now you can see the time spent on slow improvement has given us some breathing room so our skill doesn't decrease nearly as much after we stop. It takes about the same time to lose a skill than it takes to gain one in terms of immediate skill. This does not take into account de-rusting just yet. Let's say after our break of this amount of time, we continue practicing again, and this is where things get interesting. Let's introduce our second line, which represents potential skill. To understand how it works, let's start at the beginning of the graph, but this time with the potential skill line. At first, the potential skill is equal to our immediate skill. It stays this way until our immediate skill starts to decrease. At this point, the potential skill becomes linear and not exponential. If you don't know what this means, it basically means it becomes a straight line instead of a curve. Both of these lines continue in this way until we stop practicing. When we stop practicing, is when things really change. When we stop practicing, we know previously that our immediate skill becomes negative or just basically gets mirrored. But what happens to our potential skill? At this point, the potential skill becomes exponential again, meaning it becomes a curve again. It's basically the immediate skill when starting here, but instead the potential skill has a run-up time. However, unlike our immediate skill, the potential skill starts to turn down on itself if our break is long enough. If our break is extremely long, then eventually our potential skill will fall back down to this point, then turn back into approaching zero, just like our immediate skill. But both the potential skill and the immediate skill will never actually reach zero, no matter how long the break. They will just infinitely get closer and closer to zero. Anyways, let's rewind. What actually is a potential skill measuring? Well, in simplest terms, it's measuring your actual practice rate. So when you're practicing consistently the same amount, it will appear linear, even when your immediate skill starts to decrease due to the power law of practice. This does mean that if you decrease your practice time but are still practicing, your potential skill slope will decrease just like this. Your immediate skill slope will also decrease, but it's less noticeable. That's great and all, but why does the potential skill become a slope when we stop practicing altogether? Well, this is because the potential skill has a delay. It will always try to fall down back to zero and constantly approach it, but it doesn't do it instantly. Okay, that's great and all, but how does potential skill actually play a role in our immediate skill? Great question! When we start practicing again, our immediate skill flips again, inheriting the exact opposite slope. But there's a difference this time. Now, instead of exponentially decreasing, it exponentially increases. 
but this only happens if the potential skill is decreasing. When we start practicing, the potential skill also starts to increase, but it takes time to readjust, even longer than it took to start falling. Also, when the potential skill slope starts to increase again, the immediate skill rate decreases. So basically, practice acts upon the potential skill slope, but there's a delay which causes the curved appearance, and that's why the potential skill slope affects the immediate skill slope in the opposite way. For example, if our break was super short, the potential skill would not have enough time to decrease fully, which means when we start practicing, our immediate skill improvement rate would be the only slightly increased for a short period of time, then quickly resemble the previous power law of practice. This is probably the most confusing part of the whole graph, so if you want to rewatch that section to understand it, go ahead. When the immediate skill passes the potential skill, the immediate skill becomes the power law of practice again, and the potential skill becomes correlated with the practice rate. In other words, the cycle repeats. This graph even takes place on a smaller scale, so how long your practice sessions are day to day. But for simplicity, let's just call the intensity of your practice which should increase the exponential rate of immediate skill. It makes sense if you think about it. If you practice for a couple minutes a day and rest for the remaining 23 something hours, then your overall improvement rate would look something like this. Instead, if you practice for 4 hours a day and only rested 20 hours, your overall improvement graph would look something like this. Now that you understand how it works, let's go through some examples of what might happen based on how long you practice and take breaks. Let's say we're someone absolutely obsessed with whatever we're practicing, and we spend upwards of 10 hours a day on it every day. This would mean our growth initially is very fast, and we keep it growing for as long as we can. We continue this absurd practice habit for as long as we can, which just so happens to be 8 months straight. At this point, our immediate skill and potential skill would look something like this. We finally decide to take a break, and we make it a decently long one too. Let's say we take a 2 month break. Our skill level has not decreased very much because of the massive backload of skill we stored in our marathon of practice. Once we're done with our break, the potential skill curve should look something like this. Then our immediate improvement flips on itself and becomes exponentially increasing. Just like the beginning, we practice 10 hours a day, so our slope of improvement is maximized. It continues this way until it hits the potential skill. Then we get a new potential skill that's the same slope as the immediate skill at this point. This was a very extreme example, and maybe one of the best examples of how a break paired with obsessive practice can yield exponential results. But maybe it doesn't look like much because we don't have anything to compare it to. So let's make a more realistic practice routine that I think many of you out there might be following. Let's say we practice 20 minutes a day, 6 days a week, so our immediate improvement rate is far less than the person that was spending 10 hours a day. Let's say we practice for a week, then take a break. Our break isn't a long one, maybe just a few days or so, but it still shows itself in this graph. Now let's continue to practice 20 minutes a day, 6 days a week, but this time let's do it for several months because we decided to be consistent. After feeling somewhat proud of ourselves for sticking with it for so long, we decide to take a week-long break. In the grand scheme of things, it's not very long, but just long enough to see some kind of result. When we go back to practicing, we only practice 10 minutes a day, so our slope of improvement is even slower than before. We end up hitting our potential skill at this point, and end up barely seeing that much improvement from this point on because our second power law of practice kicks in. And by the end of the year, our skill level graph looks like this. This goes to show that if you feel like you're not practicing nearly as much as you could, maybe you're not practicing enough. Once you are practicing enough, however, then you should take breaks. They don't have to be crazy long to the point where you actually start to decay. Anything after the point where your immediate skill starts to approach zero is too late, but anything before can be good depending on your goals. The best time to start practicing again might be right at that point because the curve will be the greatest, and you'll be able to skyrocket through your potential skill in no time. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, let me know and feel free to check out my other videos too. See you next time.